Designing the exit system in a building is like designing a plumbing system. When designing a plumbing system, you need to know how much stuff is going down the pipe. Once you have this information, you can design the number of pipes, the size of pipes, and the length of the pipes. Plumbing systems need to provide an efficient path for the materials to move through the piping system. If the system is blocked, the materials can no longer pass through. The exit system is very similar in the design. The first step is to determine how many people are in the building. Based on this, you can determine how many exits, the width of the exits, and the maximum distance that a person has to travel to get to an exit. The IBC calls the exit system in a building the means of egress. The means of egress is the path a person takes from any occupied portion of the building to a public way. The public way is a space outside the building open to the outside air that allows the person to reach a street or some other type of public right-of-way. An example of a public way can be a parking lot a safe distance away from the building or the public street itself. The three parts of the means of egress system are the exit access, exit, and exit discharge. The exit access is the unprotected part of the means of egress that leads to an exit. An exit is the protected part of the means of egress and includes, for example, exterior exit doors and interior exit stairways. The exit discharge is outside the building and leads to the public way. As people egress from the building, they leave through the exit access to an exit that then leads them to the exit discharge and the public way. The IBC determines the potential number of people in a building by calculating the design occupant load. The occupant load is a design factor to determine the design of the means of egress. It is not necessarily the actual number of people that may be in a building. When buildings or areas are not provided with fixed seating, the occupant load is based on a calculation using the floor area of a space. In buildings or spaces that have fixed seating, the occupant load is based on the number of seats. When a building has two or more uses, the design of the means of egress applies to each portion of the building based on the use of that space. Outdoor areas must also be provided with a means of egress in accordance with the IBC. The design occupant load in areas without fixed seating is calculated by taking the floor area and dividing it by the occupant load factors in IBC Table 1004.1.2. A sampling of this table is shown in this image. The table has two different types of floor area conditions, gross and net. Gross floor area is the entire floor area within the exterior walls, exclusive of vent shafts and courts. This area includes all areas of the space, including corridors, stairways, closets, and similar areas. In areas that do not have exterior walls, like occupied roofs, the usable area under the horizontal projection of the roof, or floor above, is used to calculate the occupant load. Net floor area is the actual occupied area within the exterior walls. In the case of net floor area, the designer can deduct the unoccupied accessory areas such as corridors, stairways, toilet rooms, mechanical rooms, and closets. Both the gross and net area factors take into account any furniture, fixtures, equipment, or so on that are expected in the space under consideration. The occupant load for areas where the seats are fixed to the floor is based on the number of fixed seats that are installed in a space. In those areas that have both fixed seating and areas without fixed seating, the occupant load is calculated based on the floor areas of each type of seating noted previously. 
When a space has fixed seating without dividing arms, such as church pews, the number of seats is based on one person for each 18 inches of seating length. Seating booths in restaurants are measured at 24 inches per person. The measurement is taken at the backrest of the seating booth.